Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the Redline Selenium and JMeter plugin that we've created for Firefox. I'm going to show you how to install it, set it up, and then how you can use it to record JMeter scripts. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is install the Selenium IDE add-on for Firefox. So we're just going to simply add to Firefox, install the plugin, and restart our browser. Now we're going to install the Redline Firefox plugin. Again, we're going to follow the same steps. I'll provide links to both of those plugins in this section below. Now that we've installed both of those add-ons, we can check to ensure that they've been installed correctly. If you see the Selenium icon in the top right-hand section of your browser, you've known that it's been installed. So go ahead and click on that. And then once you see the Redline logo right here, that's how you know that both of the plugins have been installed successfully. Now we're just going to quickly take a look at the options within our JMeter add-on. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to the add-on section within Firefox. Go to extensions and then we're going to go to preferences under JMeter. And here we have just the simple settings within the plugin. Now a few things to note. Generally we're going to leave these settings as is. Um, for most tests you don't really need to change much. Now going over the different parameters here, includes essentially limits the sites which get recorded. Excludes excludes patterns from being recorded. So for example, like things like images, and you can see all the file types right here. And then maximum requests is will limit the number of requests recorded. And the visualizer is we can either enable or disable the JMeter visualizer. So for the time being, we're going to keep it enabled. Now, for this video, we're going to test slack.com. So one of, the port, one of the most important things that's often overlooked is that people often forget to change the URL here. So whatever URL you're testing, you're going to want to head and enter it there. And you can navigate out, and you're good to go. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we can use our plugin to record Selenium and JMeter tests. So for this example, as I mentioned, we're going to be testing Slack. So we're going to go ahead and navigate on over to the website. And once the website is loaded, we can then launch our plugin. Now it's important to note that the plugin is enabled to start recording on launch. So this is something that we want to keep in mind and remember because we don't want to make any mistakes. So before we're ready to begin testing, we just want to make sure that we copy our URL over into our plugin into our base URL. These should always match, otherwise you'll encounter some errors. So once we've gone ahead and done that, we are then free to begin testing. So this is just as simple as clicking around as any user would, and it will all be recorded into the plugin on the right. So I'm just going to go ahead here and aimlessly navigate around just for the sake of this test. So let's pricing and then let's go to let's buy a package. So let's buy standard and that's where we'll end it. So our ending page is here on the sign-in side. So we want to stop our recording and then we have it saved. Now what I always like to do is open up a new tab and replay the test to ensure that there are no errors. So just simply hit the play button and it will automatically go through the test. Okay, once we see all green that we know that there were no issues or failures with the test, and now we can begin to record our JMeter script. So this is as simple as just opening another new tab, closing out our own previously one, and then we're going to go ahead and click this red line button here. So once that is turns red, it will then start recording our JMeter script. So all we have to do is again just replay our Selenium test, and now it will automatically record a JMeter script for us.
Okay, now the test is completed, we can then go ahead and click on the red line button again, and it will then prompt us to save our uh, JMeter script. So I'll just call this Slack sample test, and we'll save it to my desktop. And there you go, and just like that, we've easily recorded uh, a JMeter script. Okay, now we're going to take a look on how we can open that script within JMeter. So we're going to go ahead and go to our terminal and launch JMeter. Now once we have JMeter launched, we can open up our recorded script in one of two ways. We can either click this little icon here and navigate to find it, or we can just simply drag and drop the .jmx file into JMeter. So as you can see, the test loaded up. Um, here are our various HTTP managers. These are thread group settings. We can hit this drop down menu and then we can take a look at everything that was recorded with the plugin. So now that we have the test loaded in JMeter, we can then you know, edit the settings as we see fit. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to change it from one thread to two. So we're now we're going to go to our view results tree and we're going to go ahead and play the script. Okay, it looks like our test is completed and everything was successful. So now we can go ahead and go through here and take a look at our sampler results, you know, our request and all that data. So now that we've ran the test, we can go ahead and save it again. So since I changed the number of threads from one to two, let's just simply call it thread two. And we can save that for our own purposes. So we could either, you know, rerun this test or at a later point open it back up with JMeter. But now you can go ahead in here and you can play with all the various variables. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how we can upload that test into Redline. So we're going to log into our Redline account and we're going to click on Start New Test. We'll navigate over to a, a JMeter load test, and this is just as simple as uploading our .jmx file. So we want the one with uh, the two threads, which is the one that we just did. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and play with some of the settings, depending on the type of servers we want, how many servers. So why don't we do two, two servers, do do two m3.mediums, change to spot instances. There's plenty of stuff um, that you can play around with here, but um, I'm going to turn on the save response output from individual tests and calculate percentiles. This is a, a pro feature, but it's one that's definitely very helpful. So I'm just going to show you guys what that looks like. So once we've got this all filled out to our liking, we're just going to click start test. And now it's going to spin up the servers, which could take a couple of minutes depending on how many you would like, and it'll run the test. Okay, I uh, sped up the video a little bit for the sake of time, but um, as you can see now our test is completed and it has a detailed breakdown and summary and, you know, just overview of everything that it founded. So it's actually still completing the percentiles, but we can go here uh, and view our details of the test, which is what we set up before. Let's refresh the page though to get those percentile results. Okay, here we go. So again, um, here are our percentile results for the average response time and then per page response time and you can view all of this and while you're running the test all of this data comes in at real time so you can view these graphs happen as the test runs so here we go more overview metrics jmeter thread elapse time we got our request sec uh, request metrics all that good data here we have our error metrics so looks like we did have a couple errors here with this test and then our various agent metrics and yeah there we go so this is 
the breakdown that Redline gives you after you upload the test to the site. And now you can view all the output. Um, you can download this as a CSV, so let's go ahead and do that. For your own purposes. And then you can also have plenty of great features. We can save it for Jenkins. We can make this test public. We can clone the test. And there you go. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, uh, just let us know in the comment section or give us an email as we'd uh, love to help you out.